Earlier this year, I found myself on the beautiful and lush island of Barbados. It's a place I've always wanted to visit, and I was there filming the abandoned Four Seasons Resort. That video is out now on my main channel, Bright Sun Films, if you're interested. But while I was there, I wanted to see if I could find a resort that would allow me to experience my surroundings, but also deliver on comfort, views, and food. Since it was a very short trip, I kept my budget very open. But instead of spending $1,000 a night at some boutique luxury resort that publications like Condé Nast recommended, I ended up going with a mainstream brand at a price that I thought was suspiciously cheap. So join me today as I find out if the Hilton Barbados is any good. Interestingly, the Hilton Barbados actually opened all the way back in 1966. The 100 room property was one of Hilton's first locations outside of North America. But despite holding the Hilton name, it was actually financed and owned by the Barbadian government. Demand ultimately outgrew this small property, and in 1999, the structure was demolished to make way for this new Hilton Barbados. It was completed in 2005, occupying a much larger plot of land, which more than tripled the number of guest rooms. But it seemed all of this was about to come to an end, as in 2017, the government announced they had entered negotiations to sell the property to a UK-based investment company. It was a company that already owned the Fairmont Hotel on the island, and also happens to own the Cliveden Estate, which I reviewed while we were in Britain. However, this deal never went through, since there was a ton of backlash for this decision. And as far as I know, the resort is still owned by the taxpayer. So, the Hilton Barbados is located in the capital city, Bridgetown, and the property is situated on Needham's Point Peninsula, around 25 miles from the airport. The 355-room resort is made up of two separate towers. The first is the Fort Tower, giving both island and Car Isle Bay views, as well as a southern exposure over the pool and beach. The Lighthouse Tower is the taller of the two, and interestingly, it only offers ocean views looking south. The other side is just hallway windows, which I assume is an attempt for there to be no bad view option at the hotel. But in my opinion, the island view looking north is definitely not as good, as you're directly over a parking lot and over a lot of developed areas. I stayed in the lighthouse tower with a very large premium corner one king bedroom. Now this room is fantastic. I think it has a ton of wonderful premium touches as everything feels solid and well designed. There's a very large couch and dining area, a king size bed that's reasonably comfortable, but not anything special, plus an expansive work desk. The oversized features don't stop there though. Your bathroom is enormous with a full stand up glass shower, two sinks, a private toilet, and a full bathtub, all with two windows overlooking the ocean. The TV in the main space is literally the largest I have ever seen in a hotel. I mean, it's a 65 inch 4K TV, which is honestly impressive. You also get a mini fridge and free bottled water, which you all know I love. Since this is a corner room, you get views of both western and southern exposures, along with a massive balcony. This room could easily be in a luxury hotel category, a few hundred dollars more than this, and I don't think I would bat an eye. I originally booked a standard room here, but got upgraded upon check-in. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how I got that free upgrade. Now this view definitely makes you want to join in on the activities around the resort. And there is plenty to do. There are two main pools on property, one large one with two waterfalls and a small hot tub, and an elevated infinity pool not far from the lobby. It's certainly not the most beautiful infinity edge pool I've ever seen, but for a Hilton property it's pretty nice. Elsewhere is a spa, full gym, volleyball court, and a bunch of paid water sports offerings. Uniquely, the property also features Charles Port, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that was built in the mid-1600s. Honestly, it's not super interesting, as it is pretty small, but it is a great place to catch the sunset, and the fact that there is a UNESCO Heritage Site on a Hilton Hotel property is pretty cool. It's even complete with arrow-appropriate cannons and a stainless steel sink and stag beer? Wait, what? There's also a historic lighthouse on the property, which is a really cool blending of old and new. On top of that, there's a plethora of restaurants from the casual fare like Water's Edge Pool Bar, Cuppa Cafe, and Carine Edge Bar, to the higher end offerings like the lighthouse, the grill, and La Cabane South. I ate breakfast at the lighthouse and lunch at the poolside. Both were very good, particularly the mahi-mahi I had at the pool bar. 
For dinner, I ordered room service, which was actually very delicious, as the chicken was cooked with the local Mount Gay rum, the oldest operating distillery in the world. I was very impressed with the overall food here, as it came at a reasonable price and was leaps and bounds better than the room service I had at another resort on the island, which cost nearly double the price per night than the Hilton. The design here was also something to take note of. Like many of the resorts on the island, most of the common areas like the lobby and some restaurants were all open air. I've actually never seen an open air check-in before, and while it was rather hot, the connection with the ocean was very… connective. That was until a bus pulled up and the lobby filled with diesel exhaust, but we'll ignore that. Even the elevator lobbies and the walkways between the two towers were all open air, with windows wide open on either side. It's a style of architecture I've never really seen before, and it was pretty cool to see. But the real draw on the amenity side of things are the beaches. Unfortunately though, I thought the beaches were just alright. The resort is on a peninsula, and half the beach exposure is facing south. But if you've ever been to Barbados, you'll know that the east and southern shores of the island are known to be a bit more choppy. There is a man-made cove with a slight breakwater wall to try and mitigate this, but the beaches just feel a bit small. The other side of the peninsula is much better by comparison, as it faces the calm and crystal clear waters of Car Isle Bay. But it's nowhere near as accessible as the South Beach, and the whole parking lot borders this one with a fence wrapping all the way around. You need to walk all the way down to the public beach access to get onto it. And while the waters are still very pretty, it's not the best on the island. My recommendation would be to take a short drive to Paradise Beach or Haywoods Beach, or the many others that offer just a bit more. With that said though, the value proposition here is pretty spectacular. I paid just $279 USD per night for my stay here. The high season is between December and around April, and rates start at around $475 per night. From what I've seen though, that's pretty high. The lowest rates can be found during July to October, and are as low as $212 a night, or even lower through third-party sites. But if you're going around then, you're also running the risk of being swept away by a hurricane or perishing by heat stroke. Now I mentioned earlier that I got a free upgrade to a room that would normally cost around $357 a night, but I only got it due to my Hilton status. As an Honors Gold member, you're given a few perks at this resort like free continental breakfast every morning, two drink vouchers, and of course the room upgrade. To achieve Hilton Honors Gold, you need to stay at least 40 nights at a Hilton property in a qualifying year. But instead of doing that, I got the status just by having an American Express Platinum credit card. There's actually a few credit cards that offer this complimentary status, and most Hilton properties around the world recognize your status. Some of these credit cards offer yearly fees as low as $95. So if that's something that's worth it and is interesting to you, well, you know, look into it. Now, one of the most common criticisms for this property is that it feels too Americanized and has no charm or connection to Barbadian culture. At first I thought I agreed with that sentiment, as this obviously does cater to North American comforts, and has the feeling of a larger Hilton branded resort. But I also found there to be a lot of touches that connect it to the island. The well-known local establishment La Cabane has had a restaurant on Bats Rock Beach for a number of years now, and has grown a fabulous reputation. Coincidentally, it also happens to be a few meters from the abandoned Four Seasons resort that I documented on the main channel. After filming for hours in what felt like a demonic sauna, we sat in this gorgeous restaurant surrounded by clearly wealthy people. But the food was great and the staff didn't judge us for looking like we had just traversed through concrete ruins all afternoon. So I was very pleased to see that they had opened up a second location here on the beach at the Hilton. It's definitely not as secluded and magical as the original location, but it's still a slice of an authentic Barbadian establishment. I would actually argue that staying at this resort as a whole is in some cases better for the island than staying at others. After all, this resort is entirely owned by the Barbadian taxpayers. So at its core, it is a resort that is owned and staffed by the citizens of this beautiful nation. So when you're spending your money here, you're contributing directly to the island, and I don't think you could say that about some other local resorts that are owned by outside management companies like the Fairmont and Sandals. So let's give this an actual rated score. I call it Jake's Isn't Any Good Score, and it's based off of five categories, each out of ten, for a potential perfect score of 50 out of 50. We'll start with the location. 
Being in Bridgetown, the capital of Barbados, you have easy access to a bunch of local amenities. And really, the island is so small that getting anywhere, especially if you have a car, is super easy. It's a 9 out of 10, only detracted for its on-site location, lack of great beaches, and walkability to points of interest. Amenities are also fantastic, with plenty of quality choices for food, a spa, an infinity pool, and essentially private beach access. It's a 9 out of 10. Luxury is also very strong here for the price point, and I could easily see this room being in a hotel double this in the Caribbean. It's also great to see history being incorporated on the property. Now the rest of the resort, especially the pool area, is looking a bit tired, and there is some neglect here and there. Overall it's pretty good, and earns a 7 out of 10. Service is unfortunately a bit of a hit or miss. Most of the staff were very warm and friendly, with a few exceptions. It's a 7 out of 10. Value, though, is another strong category. For the price we paid, I think you get a lot out of this property, as it has a lot to offer. I was super satisfied with the room, and reasonably impressed by everything else. I'd give it an 8 out of 10, which gives the Hilton Barbados a total score of 40 out of 50. $279 is a fantastic price for what you get here. Well, yes, it isn't as luxurious or authentically themed as other resorts like the Coral Reef Club or Sandy Lane, but those hotels can easily go well past $1,000 USD a night. And really, both of those barely have any attachment to the Barbados people, apart from the staff and decor. Honestly, if you don't mind a busier resort with a less desirable beach, but just as refined with similar luxurious elements, I find it hard to justify spending your money elsewhere on the ultra-expensive properties in Barbados, especially if you stay here for long periods of time. Don't forget to check out my Four Seasons exploration on the main channel, and if you like this review and want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel. Also leave a comment on what you'd like to see me review next. My name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.